Thank you again for joining me this week. There's been a lot of focus over the last few days on apartment building safety after the deadly fire that killed one woman in Silver Spring last weekend. She lived a few floors above where the fire started and where it was contained, but she died from smoke inhalation. Her death is a tragedy and our sympathies are with her family and friends. We also hope for quick recoveries to all those who are injured in this fire, including our own first responders. This fire is a reminder that safety should be of paramount importance during any emergency. Montgomery County Fire and Rescue Service Chief Scott Goldstein reminded everyone during my weekly media briefing that often smoke inhalation is the primary reason people die in fires. Having a safety plan, practicing it, and leaving a fire as quickly as possible are ways to stay safe. Sometimes, like with Saturday's fire, 911 callers instruct people to shelter in place until the fire is out or the smoke can be cleared out. This fire displaced hundreds of other residents of this complex, and we're going to continue to support their needs as well. I want to thank the county's departments, Red Cross of the National Capital and Greater Chesapeake Region, and the owners of the arrived apartments for their work since the fire happened early Saturday morning in getting victims temporary shelter, food, and other essentials. And I want to especially thank the Doubletree Hotel across the street, which helped provide immediate assistance to victims by opening their lobby to get them out of the cold, sharing breakfast, and allowing our partners to use one of their conference rooms to help victims. Not surprisingly, our community is stepping up as well. Since the donation fund was established to help the victims, $23,000 has been collected. You can find a link to that assistance pinned to the top of my Twitter feed. For the second time in the last four months, we see a group of Proud Boys trying to stop a Drag Queen Story Hour event. The latest disruption happened Saturday morning outside a bookstore in Silver Spring. Volunteers formed the wall outside a loyalty bookstore, preventing demonstrators from entering, leading to some shoving, hitting, and kicking. This episode was upsetting for several reasons, including the aberrant message protesters were trying to deliver, the violence they were willing to use, and how it appears these incidents are escalating. I don't want to see violence come from these, and we're looking at ways to protect people from the threat of violence posed by these protesters. Demonstrators shouldn't be allowed to use force without consequences, and I expect assaults to lead to arrests. If they try to repeat some of the things we saw captured on video this past Saturday, these people will be cited, arrested, and jailed. We will still protect anyone's right to peacefully protest, but we're not going to allow assaults. We will not be intimidated by these cowards who ironically call themselves proud, but refuse to show their faces. They epitomize hate, intolerance, and misogyny, all values that have no home in Montgomery County. We have good news this week in our police recruitment efforts. Montgomery County and the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge 35 have come to an agreement to begin offering a $20,000 bonus for new sworn police recruits. This is a significant signing bonus, matching the highest amounts offered elsewhere in our region. This bonus will improve our competitiveness with other departments to attract the most talented, committed, and diverse upcoming recruit classes to MCPD. The funding for the initial part of this effort will come from savings we've accrued from the many personnel vacancies within the Montgomery County Police Department. Full implementation of the bonus program will require county council action for the year 2024 and beyond budgets. Currently, the department is down 129 sworn officers. Police departments all around the country are struggling to fill positions. However, when this bonus is paired along with our recent pay increases for officers, I believe it will help make up that shortfall. Right now, we're working on changes to the police department, including revamping our training procedures. Over the last two years, we've worked with the community and nationally recognized consulting company, focusing on public safety and they've helped us identify ways to improve public safety and engagement with our community. Our department has high expectations, and I believe this bonus money will help attract some of the best candidates to apply. We do want more of our police officers to come from Montgomery County, and if we can help them afford to live here, that will help greatly in growing our outstanding department. Because of the ongoing concern about teen drug use and overdoses, there will be another community forum this Saturday 
on the dangers of fentanyl. It will be at Northwood High School in Silver Spring starting at 9.30 a.m. Some breakout sessions during the two-hour program will be conducted in Spanish as well. Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid and can be deadly even for first-time users. Since the start of the school year, five deaths have been blamed on fentanyl use. More than that have needed emergency anti-overdose medication commonly known as Narcan. Without this widespread availability of Narcan in schools and throughout the community, I hate to think of how many more kids could have been lost to fentanyl. Earlier this week, a Spanish-speaking audience was invited to an online community forum on the dangers of fentanyl that was organized by our Health and Human Services Department and our Latino Health Initiative. We hope that no matter the language, the message is clear to all Montgomery County families. No one is immune to the dangers of fentanyl. Please educate yourself. Have conversations with your children and teenagers, as well as seek out support and treatment if you need or if your loved ones are needing help. National settlements against these drug makers and distributors over opioid lawsuits are expected to bring Montgomery County approximately $34 million over the next 18 years. The same lawsuits are expected to net the state of Maryland about $400 million over that same time period. These monies are from settlements against pharmaceutical companies that the county joined in 2018. And quite frankly, despite the large monetary settlements, it's still not enough restitution for what these companies have done to our country. If anyone else in society committed an act that led to thousands of deaths, they'd be facing life in prison, not fines. It is frustrating that people who masterminded the explosion of these drugs have escaped responsibility for their crimes. It's yet another example of the unequal treatment under the law of white collar criminals, even when their actions kill people. This week, Montgomery County joined another lawsuit with other jurisdictions in the state against McKinsey and Company, another culprit for its role in marketing opioids to the public and medical providers. The county council recently approved a law firm to represent the county in that matter. The suit alleges that McKinsey defendants served as a marketing advisor for over a decade for several opioid manufacturers, and in this role helped counter the, quote, emotional message from families of overdose victims and advised Purdue on how to, quote, turbocharge the sale of opioids. I'm glad that these legal efforts are moving forward. These companies made billions of dollars while families suffered the consequences of drug addiction. They must be held accountable. Let's end with some good news. We've had another big drop in COVID-19 cases and we're seeing new hospitalization numbers fall to levels we haven't seen in more than a year. Our community level status remains low. We remain committed to providing vaccines and boosters to walk-in patients or by appointment for anyone seeking it. You can also schedule those appointments in Silver Spring, Rockville, and Germantown and Burtonsville online by calling 240-777-2982 or by scheduling a visit with your local doctor or pharmacy. Staying up to date on your bivalent booster is still your best protection against a serious bout with COVID. Most people who have received their booster shots since last September have not been seriously ill. COVID testing kits and face masks remain free and available at local libraries and other county facilities. And the more good news, last Friday, we sat down with Maryland Governor Wes Moore and Lieutenant Governor Aruna Miller to go over our plans for the UM3 Institute for Health Computing Project. We spent close to an hour with leaders from the University of Maryland College Park, University of Maryland Baltimore, and the University of Maryland Medical System, along with WMATA leaders to discuss the project, and we answered questions. In a press conference afterwards, the governor praised the project, saying ideas like this give him hope for Maryland's future. He, like I, sees this as a transformative project for our region and the state. We are already situated in the heart of the nation's fourth largest biohealth cluster. Adding this research facility focused on artificial intelligence, machine learning, and virtual and augmented reality will strengthen our ability to draw life sciences companies here, as well as advanced drug discovery and drug treatments. This project also offers the promise of using technology and research done here to improve health outcomes for the nation and the world. It will be a strong anchor for the North Bethesda Metro Station. 
And while Metro is important, we need support in order to put in place the BRT lines that are critical to serving the 355 corridor. There's an enormous potential here for development, but existing road networks will not handle the future growth. That's why the previous governor's offer to try to attract Amazon included the major investment in BRT lines necessary to accommodate the future workers that will arrive here. And we've discussed that with the governor as well. I'm excited about the future of this project and the state's partnership in bringing it to Montgomery County. And that's our wrap for today. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you again next week.